Yo, 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 welcome back for another episode of CTYD's Creative Space. I'm CTYD Pat, your host, and I'm here with my boy Kendra McLean, aka Deuce. So, um, like like always, rather than letting me introduce you, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Okay. So my name is uh Kendon McLean or Deuce, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm a musician, composer, arranger, all that, anything music related, I do it. So yeah, that's all it is to know about me. I, music. The man is a young prodigy. Like, that man is cold on just about any instrument he touch. Uh, and y'all going to see that later. But, uh, so let's jump straight into the interview, bro. I'm going to ask you, could you name off all of the instruments you play? So, <laughs> so we'll say, um, I think I'm a, I'll go like from proficiency level. So drums, piano, uh, organ, trombone, bass guitar. Um, the euphonium or the the baritone tuba, and then um, we could even yeah well yeah so like trumpet, um, viola, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone kind of but yeah I think all the instruments as far as like marching band instruments I can teach them like I can tell you how to play them probably better than I can play them myself. So I can definitely show somebody how to play him. So, yeah. This man is a walking ensemble. <laughs> this man, he just named off like 20 instruments. <laughs> so, uh, what is your favorite? Or, I, I'm, you probably got a couple of favorites since you yeah, play so yeah. much. So, um, I have favorites for different settings. So I think for church, I like playing drums more. But for like recording in a studio or for like playing in a more intimate setting, it's going to be piano more. It just depends on the mood. I'm, I'm more of a fan of playing piano and like for like R&B or stuff like that. Now I'll play gospel piano and stuff like that, but I definitely feel like I can do more in like an R&B or an intimate setting like that. I feel that. And what was your uh, first, what was your first instrument you began playing? First instrument was drums. Drums. So yeah, that was when I, I think I was around five years old, started playing drums. Okay, and is there anybody who's uh you know who you look towards or who you're influenced uh, by when it comes to your instruments, like uh, your your father or mm -hmm. uh, any other musicians in your life? So I definitely took an interest play by you know with drums because of my dad um, when he played drums at church, um, and my mom was singing in the choir, so. Um, they set my, my little baby carrier by the drums. So, you know, as I grew up a little bit more, I was walking around with drumsticks and stuff like that. So I think he was the first direct influence that I had in regards to music. So That's nice. That's nice. So is there any uh, celebrity musicians that you look up to? Um, Definitely. I think probably the most prominent one right now would be, I'd have to say, think PJ Morton. Mm. Um, mm. PJ Morton has a, a phenomenal gift, not only musically, but, uh, well, not only instrumentally, but songwriting as well. Um, he's just crazy. I, I listen to a lot of PJ Morton interviews and anything that he's involved in. I definitely, you know, try to tune into that. That's good. That's good. What has been some of the hardships you've encountered while you try to uh, learn, you know? Um, I think that for me personally, because the way my mind works as I started to learn more instruments, um, when I was a little bit younger, I wanted to start playing by ear and kind of forget reading the music and stuff like that because I felt like, you know, I could just catch it. Mm -hmm. But the thing with that, um, to be a, you know, a a musician that can be called on for anything, you you have to learn everything. You know, you can play by ear, but opportunities may arise where somebody needs you to read some sheet music or something like that, and I don't want to miss out on any opportunities. So I had to kind of check myself in that regard and, you know, kind of double back and make sure I, I could read, you know, bass clef and alto clef and tenor clef and all that. So that was probably the biggest thing, just, you know, trusting the process and not trying to skip over anything as far as my musicianship. You always got to trust the process no matter what you do. 
I feel like uh, a lot of creatives kind of give up on themselves, you know, when they're when it's hard for them to learn something. Right. But you know, you always gotta trust that process and know that if you put in the time, you put in that work, you are gonna learn it. And you are gonna go above and beyond. Uh, what's your favorite genre of music? Like, what do you prefer? Like, what it, when you play it or when you mm -hmm. hear it? Like, it doesn't matter. M matter of fact, what do you like to play the most and what do you like to hear the most? Okay, so. I like to play right now in my in my current situation where I'm at musically right now. I'm I love to play gospel music. I got to. Got I'll, to. I'll do a lot of things where you know I'll play some R and B or some or some jazz. But for me, because I'm playing more piano right now than drums, and I'm playing a lot more for people. You know, in churches playing piano, I'm doing more of that than playing drums. I think that. Um, the gospel songs that I've had to learn, the, the things I've researched, gospel is probably the only genre I know that just anything can be gospel. Anything. So that's that's probably my favorite because gospel music, it can transition into anything. You know, you can put two gospel songs together and it'll just go crazy. So that's probably my, my favorite to play. Now to listen, it would be a tie between gospel and and then kind of R&B soul because I'm more of a fan of kind of the emotional gospel just because I find my musicality in that. Um, but then R&B and soul and that whole thing, I think that, because um, I'm a fan of, of real um, voices and things like that. So when you have people like, you know, Giveon and Daniel Caesar, just the musicality in, the, in their bands and things like that, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. So. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be a fan of them, definitely. See, I know you. You said you like the R and B and soul, and you like mm -hmm. the uh, you like the gospel, right? So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna ask you a question. Uh, might be a tough question to call. I mean, okay. you know, for you to call right. or whatnot. But I'm gonna go ahead and set you up. Do you prefer Kirk Franklin or Smokey Norfolk? And just give me the rundown. Why and whatnot? Um. I I'd, I'd have to say, um, I'd have to say Kirk Franklin, and it's almost easy for me because if you, you know, despite the circumstances right now, I think that <laughs> I think that Kirk Franklin, his he's a he's a genius. That's that's the the simplest way I could put it. Yes, you know, album spanning back twenty years, um, and each of those albums is just phenomenal you know i'm a little biased because i just got this tattoo of you know kirk franklin's latest album um so but especially i think that every kirk franklin album is a story in itself his albums don't really they all don't really tie into each other they all mm -hmm. have a set theme and you know we have stuff like um even his christmas stuff like if you're if you were yeah. in church, you you probably sang a Kirk Franklin song around Christmas time. Now you know, I think that Smokey he definitely has some some songs that can, you know go go neck and neck with Kirk Franklin. But overall, of course, musically, just the lyrics and things like that, I'd ha I have to go Kirk Franklin. Yeah, I'm about to say uh, when it when it goes back going back to Kirk Franklin, like the man's compositions, they just they yeah. just go crazy, like. Even if you know, even if you don't walk the gospel life, like you know a Kirk Franklin song. Yeah. Everybody know a Kirk. Everybody Franklin knows song. a Kirk Franklin. Everybody song. knows some Kirk Franklin. The man is really a genius. Um, but moving on to my next question, we are gonna take it back, son. Okay. Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder. <laughs> he said that fast. I I couldn't even. He said that fast. Yeah, I, I Stevie Wonder is because my mom played Stevie Wonder when I was when she was pregnant with me. Mm. So that already kind of, you know, started to build up my love for Stevie Wonder. But when I figured it out for myself and started listening to music, um, Stevie just has some, his his songs, people might not be a fan just because of the simplicity in some of, some of his, you know, albums and things like that. But I think that from a musician standpoint or a singer standpoint, like you, there there's no other option but Stevie you know and Ray Charles is also you know a genius musically course, and all that but I have to think of 
Stevie songs like Ribbon in the Sky. You know, and things like that. Like, that's all I have to say, Ribbon in the Sky. And think about how many people have, you know, covered that song and did things like that. But there's nothing... You can't compare anybody's voice to Stevie when he does his own songs. That's true. But like you can that's never true. say, you know, they did it better than Stevie because his songs, he writes them for him. So that's that's why I would have to just pick Stevie. I respect that. I respect that. Well, you know, like we said... You're a genius yourself, a young prodigy when it comes to, uh, you know, pretty much any instrument. Right, yeah. So, we're going to go ahead and show the viewers what you got. Okay. So, y'all stay tuned. Check them out. Hey, so as y'all can see, that man, he nasty on the keys. <laughs> that man definitely got some soul in him. It's crazy. You, you said gospel was one of your favorite. Well, gospel is your favorite. Yeah. And we can see with what you just did. You, you've been you've been in the gospel all your life. 
So, um, yeah, that man crazy. Definitely check him out. Uh, you got, like, YouTube or something like that? Probably my, I mean, all social media is all, all my name. So just mm-hmm. Kenneth McClain. Every anything you can think of, I'm probably on it. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah, definitely check him out. I'm sure he has some mini clips up there, you know, about uh, him playing the piano or his various 200 other instruments. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely check him out. But um, getting back to the interview, so um, how would you describe instrumentalists within the city? How would you describe the music? Um, instrumentalists, I think I don't know a lot of them. And that's it's almost unfortunate. Well, it is unfortunate um, because when there's times when I want to work with musicians, I don't want to say I don't like to call adults or, you know, 25 and above. Yeah. But, I mean, it would be nice to, you know, have a group of, you know, younger kids that, you know, I could, I could call on. But it's really not that many, you know, it's not that many in this community that, play instruments like that, you know, besides people like, you know, Sidney Harris and Matthew and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think that's, you know, I don't see a lot of instrumentalists, but as far as music um, in itself, I definitely see a lot of, um, you know, rappers and singers and things like that that are very prominent in, you know, the Kansas City area and things like that, so. So, um, for those rappers and singers, how would you describe their music and their sound if you, if you want to get into that? Right, okay, so... Um, I'm a fan of musicality up to a point. There's times when I like to, you know, just hear things, you know, hear different sounds, hear different, you know, rap genres and things like that. So I, I definitely, I think that in some cases, I see a lot of rappers that are almost the same or patterning, you know, some, some more prominent artists. But then on the flip side, I definitely see a lot of people who are making their mark in you know, kind of doing their own thing. So I think, you know, I'm happy as long as everybody's kind of finding where they fit in and things like that. So I can't really complain in that regard. That's great. That's great. You know, a lot of people were down, you know, others, but here you are uplifting them. And that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. I feel like that's important when it comes to our community. We need a lot of uplifting with one another because, you know, we lift one another and that helps build confidence. Right. You know? And when you got your confidence up, it's amazing the things you can do. Uh, so I want to move on from there and I want to say is there any uh, people that you, you've you worked with whether they be rappers, singers or other musicians mm-hmm. is there anybody that you've worked with in, uh, in your community? Um, I think I've definitely worked with some people who have been trying to get into singing and rapping and things like that um, I've worked with a lot of people like that um, I think sometimes they just get they lose confidence just because they don't want to, you know, fall into the cracks because there's so many people that are already doing what they're doing. But as far as musicians, I've definitely worked with a few musicians that, you know, are extremely prominent. Um, you know, a guitarist, you know, Sidney Harris, mm-hmm. um, uh, another drummer, uh, Anderson Jones, and of course, Matthew Calhoun. I think that um, those three are really important um, as far as the music scene in Kansas City because those are the those musicians they are ones that I've been close to that I know are focusing on their craft or those are ones that I know you know care about their instruments yeah so yeah. it's definitely been fun to work with all three of them and um, those are the musicians that I've um, kind of been working with more recently, and of course a few from a couple of years ago, like um, Kalen Whitmore, I went to Washington with him, and Amari Miller. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people like them. So, yeah. So, uh, are there any projects we can expect from you? Like, have you ever thought about putting together a project to release on all platforms, or you thought about that? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people ask me all the time, because I'll, I'll put something on TikTok, or I'll put something on Snapchat or Instagram, a lot of people ask me why, you know, haven't I kind of put together like an album of covers or something like that or something original. And I think it's, it's definitely, I can say that it is, it is coming. I wouldn't put a, a, a strong uh, timeline on it, but I would definitely say 
I have some things that I definitely plan on kind of putting out before before the summer, definitely. I spent a lot of time, especially over since quarantine, since March, kind of perfecting my craft. And I definitely had some things recorded and ready to go that I just haven't put out yet. So I think that's definitely in the works. Before summer, that sounds pretty soon because yeah. we're in March right now. So I'm excited to hear all that. And definitely, as soon as you drop it, let me know. <laughs> you know I'm going to put that everywhere. Uh, and, of course, I'm going to have links in the YouTube description so that everybody can check that out um, when that time does come. Uh, what would you? What advice would you give others who are trying to get into learning instruments? Like, for instance, myself, I want to eventually start learning ba- bass and piano uh-huh. and all that. What What advice could you give people trying to learn that stuff? I would definitely say, never become satisfied, hmm. um, because sometimes, especially for newer musicians, you come into um, being a musician and you want to learn, or you hear something that makes you want to play piano or that makes you want to play drums or whatever. So then once you learn that, um, you you just stop. For me, for a while, when Best Part first came out, I wanted to learn Best Part. And um, when I learned Best Part, I kind of stopped learning other things because I know how to play Best Part. So, you know, my mind stopped there. But then there was a couple instances where I was missing out on some opportunities because... I was so focused on best part that I start practicing everything else. So I think that never becoming satisfied is definitely something that is important for anyone who's trying to become a musician because you have to keep climbing. You have to keep wanting to learn new things because if you become stagnant, then you miss out on so many opportunities that, you know, are just, you know, an inch away from you. So, so definitely staying hungry. Yeah. It's how you can improve and how you can get better at something. Yeah. I appreciate that advice. Um, in the next couple of years, where do you see yourself going with your talents? Uh, how do you see yourself uh, utilizing your craft? Um, in the next couple of years, I'd hopefully be a music teacher. Mm. That's what I'm in, what I'm in college for. Um, but I don't see myself just being a music teacher. Of course, I still want to be in the music scene in Kansas City. I don't plan on leaving Wyandotte County just because um, I think it's so much that I can offer and that, you know, it's so much other people can offer if they just stay here and kind of build this community up. So in the next couple of years, you know, hopefully we'll have a whole bunch of more musicians that, you know, are able to get together and play or things like that. So that's, I definitely plan on helping the music community out in every way I can in the next couple of years. Tying back to something you said, you said that, you know, you want to definitely want to stay here within one night. Yeah. And I feel like that's so important because, you know, you, you notice a lot of people, especially musicians and, and our recording artists, yeah. they like to branch out and go to these other cities and whatnot. And, you know, I understand sometimes you got to go somewhere to bring what you learn back. Right. But at the same time, I feel like if a lot of us started to really work more intimately, um, you know, they work closely together within the city then we'll be able to do something amazing here. Like right, we yeah. have we have the seeds, all they need to do is get planted. Yeah. So I, I definitely I like what you said. I, uh, that's something I can appreciate. Definitely, definitely. Um but like I said, man, like you're a prodigy, bro. You're a genius. And you know, we just appreciate you coming on to the uh C T Y D, the creative space. No you problem, know? I appreciate um, it. I just wanna thank you for coming on to the no show. Problem. Appreciate uh, y'all for letting me on. Oh, of course, of course. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. I'm your host, CTYD Pat, my boy Deuce, and we out.